Hey everybody, it's Eric Papenfus. Happy New Year and welcome to a very special New Year's Eve edition of By Day Friday. If it's Friday, it must be a By Day. And today we're going to talk about New Year's gift giving. Let's get right to it, Amanda. Now, I've talked a little bit about gift books in the past, but I think it's important to note that in Victorian times, there were three days a year in which it was appropriate to give a book as a gift. Would you care to guess what three days of the year those were, Amanda? Your birthday, Christmas, and New Year's? Yes, you've got it. Yes. Not only did you get it, but publishers got it too, and they decided they'd make it easier by just publishing one book that could be reused for all three occasions. So here's an example of Friendship's Offering, which is a Christmas, New Year, and Birthday gift book. Very clever, right? Um, I like this one a lot because it has this beautiful inlaid pattern, and this is seemingly very American, whereas this edition was published in London, and it was published a little bit earlier, but it is the same exact concept. It is forget-me-not, a Christmas, New Year's, and birthday gift book. This one's also interesting, Amanda, if you look at it, it was sold at a little bookstore in Philadelphia. That's called a bookseller's ticket. And there it is in the corner. So uh, today we have a variation of that that we do at The Scholar, and it's called Blind Date with a Book. Good for Christmas, New Year's, and birthday gift giving. Here's some examples when you walk in the store. And by the way, we're here at the main store. You can get the beautiful view of the full expanse of the bookstore here. Uh, behind us, but right down by that counter, down at the bottom, you can pick out a book, and all you're gonna have is beautiful wrapping paper and a little bit of a clue to what it says. This says, the start of a classic kid series, and this says, check in with the classic stories of a pioneer family. Ooh, which one you, would you want? But if you're looking for a last minute gift, that's the way to do it. But our main book for discussion today, Amanda, is a book of song. Why? Because we are gonna ring in the new year right. And we're gonna do it in such a way that has us singing. But I wanted to share with you, and this is a good new word for our end of the year by day. This book is called a Samoban. And a Samoban is a book in which they bound together a lot of different things that were published individually about the same time. And lots of collections of sheet music are actually in Samoban form. And uh, they bind them together into a single volume. And this volume is particularly interesting because look, it starts with the Star Spangled Banner. And I can't think of anything more patriotic to start with than the Star Spangled Banner, but you know it's an early version of the Star Spangled Banner for a couple of reasons. One, because look who it says wrote it. Apparently it was written by a Dr. McHenry. Well, they got a little confused with Fort McHenry and Francis Scott Key, but nonetheless it was there. And here's an interesting fact about the Star Spangled Banner, Amanda. We don't sing all the verses, and one of the reasons we don't sing all the verses is because verses two, three, and four are just a little bit more controversial than the first verse. For instance, did you know that the Star Spangled Banner talked about slavery? <laughs> well, it does. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the Star Spangled Banner and the triumph doth wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave. And I think it is important to note that during the War of 1812, it was the British who stood for freedom and emancipation for African-American slaves. They're the ones that offered them freedom uh, in exchange for fighting against the Americans that were defending uh, Fort McHenry. But an interesting way to begin a book. And then the book ends with a very interesting patriotic song called um, Hail Columbia, which is the current modern day uh, anthem for the Vice President of the United States. Um, but the one I want to talk about is the first one in this book because it's really interesting. If you look at this, it is something called Viva Poyes, the Poyes Grand March, or a quick step and a waltz. And if you look even more closely, you'll see that there's a lithograph of two sort of indigenous people on the cover dancing. Now, what on earth is this about? Well, it turns out that it is about one of the great frauds in all of history, uh, in 1821, there was a Scottish general by the name of Gregor McGregor. That's a pretty good Scottish name, isn't it? And he came back from fighting in Latin America, and he claimed that he had spoken to the king of the Mosquito Coast, and that the king of the Mosquito Coast had granted him land in a place called Poyes, which was supposedly in Honduras. And he went around Scotland suggesting that people buy 
land in Poyais and join him on a journey to settle this new country. And one of the ways that he popularized it was he composed sheet music and entrance music. So he'd walk into a party or a grand fete in Scotland and there would be the Poyais waltz. And uh, he had a special uh, waltz uh, composed for his wife. And then there was the Grand March. And everybody bought into this. It's considered the first great confidence scheme in Western civilization. He raised hundreds of thousands of dollars. He got 250 people to board a ship and sail to the coast of Honduras. And do you know what happened? The boat dropped them off and they all pretty much died. They <laughs> died of food, starvation, and disease because there was no country and he made off with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Eventually, this caught up with him because a few people did survive and went back to England and said uh, this was a scam and he went up uh, and, and fled himself to Latin America where the great Gregor McGregor died. But what a confidence trick. What a securities fraud. And uh, that's an amazing, amazing song. All right, we're gonna end today with a funny book and one more song. First, since we're ringing in the new year, right? Let's talk about Backyard Ballistics. Build potato cannons, paper, match, rockets, Cincinnati fire kites, tennis ball mortars, you name it. What a great book for teenagers for New Year's. Um, do you know what Cincinnati fire kites are, Amanda? I do not. Well, I learned they're sort of like a hot air balloon, but made of newspaper, and you just simply set the newspaper on fire, and it goes until until it can burn no more. Sure. All right. Good. Well, um, we're going to ring in the new year, right? You may have noticed there's a bell behind me. Well, that bell is a 19th century Scottish bell. And I think in order to ring it properly, we should also sing the one piece of sheet music, which is also in this book, Old Lang Syne, the famous Scottish anthem that was uh, sung on Hogmanay. Hogmanay being the day before uh, New Year's in Scotland. If I may... Should old acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should old acquaintance be forgot and days of old lang syne? For old lang syne, my dear, for old lang syne, we'll take a cup of kindness yet for old lang syne happy new year everybody look forward to seeing you friday for every by day in 2023